I'm a singer, I'm a drummer. Either of those two would do. <laughs> Welcome to the A to Z of Phil Collins. I'll take it to check, but I prefer the cash. <laughs> the idea behind this podcast is to take a journey through the life and music of Phil Collins. When I said yes to do the job, it was just to write the songs. But as I did the demos, they decided they couldn't see anybody else singing them. We'll talk about events like Band-Aid. It was an ego-free day. Pay tribute to friends like Eric Clapton and Robert Plant and tackle subjects including reunions, gorillas, and the importance of a good drum fill. Stories, songs, memories, each one represented by a different letter from A to Z. I always used to watch the Oscars and, you know, you wonder what it's like to be up there and then suddenly you get an opportunity. And the winner is... Everything I've done has been really a bit like jazz. This is the A to Z of Phil Collins podcast. With me, Phil Collins. Hello and welcome to episode two of the A to Z of Phil Collins with me, your host, Matt Everett, featuring, more importantly, Phil Collins himself, because if anyone's going to talk about Phil's life, I guess it should really be him. As you'll know if you're listening to the first episode in this podcast, we're going through the A to Z of Phil's life and career so far, with each letter representing a different song or friend or moment or story. Last week we covered The Action, which was the first band that Phil ever fell in love with, Band Aid, Disney and Don't Lose My Number. This week we move on and we start with the letter E. E is for, of course, another classic, Easy Lover. E is also for Eric Clapton, a guitarist you might have heard of. It seems to be a really nice story, you know, the, to be a fan of someone and then to become a real friend of someone and then really musically and personality-wise link up. Yeah. Why do you think you guys get on so well? Well, I, I don't know. You know, we used to live reasonably close together. <laughs> um, you know, I mean, he was in Ewhurst and I was in Guildford and it's not too far in the country. I last saw him the day I played Hyde Park. Well, actually, that isn't the last time I saw him. I've seen him more recently than that. But he um, he came to present me with this uh, music therapy award, which he's never done, apparently. He's never presented anything to anybody. You know, it's not the kind of thing he does. But... It showed, uh, you know, our friendship that he decided to come out of the woods and turn up and, and do this. And it was lovely to see him. He said some very nice things. We stayed in touch. He then visited me in hospital, not to persuade me, but to ask me if I would go into rehab, which is, uh, you know, his place in Antigua. Mm. Crossroads, uh, uh, and, you know, we stayed in touch while I was, not while I was there, because, you know, you don't have a phone, but but after I came out. Um, but we've been friends since the late 70s, which is quite a while, and, and he didn't even know I was a musician at first, I don't think. I was just a friend of his wife's. And we just hit it off, you know. We used to go to football together, uh, he used to play billiards into the middle of the night, snooker, you know. It was just, he was just a great guy to hang with. F is for, this is a weird one, flats in Dagenham. So it's drummer lingo, it's kind of drummer code. So some drum fills have nicknames in the drumming fraternity, as we explain, sort of. Flats in Dagenham doesn't mean some flats in yeah, Dagenham. Yeah. It's a shorthand. Flats in Dagenham, flats in Dagenham. Yeah, because yeah, this is, uh, what's the other one? Mick Jagger, Mick Jagger, Kate Bush. Or, I'll take it to check, but I prefer the cash. <laughs> 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 so it's 
So yeah, this is this, it's sort of drama shorthand for for Phil's, is it not? Yeah, I'd never heard that one before. But uh, yeah, in a group of people, depends <laughs> what group of people you hang around with. Really, I mean, I you know, people know better probably in my band that to make drummer jokes. So I don't know. Uh, I I don't hear too many of them anymore. But <laughs> that's in Dagenham. Um, so I was trying to find out more, and that's yeah, Mitch and Mitch and Bush. I hadn't heard the check. Cash one, but it does, yeah, it, it it works. Are there any others you can think of? No, come on, you're impressed with taking the check and up for the cash, you know. <laughs> you? Don't push me for another one. You're listening to the A to Z of Phil Collins with me, Phil Collins. F is for fills. Drum fills, of course. Is there a favourite fill? Is there a favourite moment, little of your drumming career when you're like, that was a good day. That was, that's the one for me. I'm sure there's a few. Well, I mean, I, you've got to put in the air tonight, I guess, in there somewhere. You know, the but up and but up and but up and but but. The sound, uh, I mean, Intruder, Peter Gabriel. You know, some songs, don't need that stuff, you know. I mean, a lot of songs don't need that stuff, and I, I think it's down to taste as to when you feel you have to do something and and and, and resist. I mean, I remember doing a session for Tears for Fears uh, for Women in Chains, and I knew Kurt pretty good, and, and uh, what's his name? It begins with R. Roland. R- Roland, yeah. And they got me down, and what they really wanted in this drum entry was da 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 What they really wanted me to do, they wanted the son of in the air tonight. And I said, I can't do that. You know, I mean, it's, 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 it's been done. I did it and I can't do, you know, I have to do something else. And when someone is expecting something like that, it's very difficult to make it anything else work. So I did something, and they seemed to be happy with it, but, uh, but I don't think they were. So sometimes if you do something and it sounds great, that's, you have to close the door on it and, and, and move on and find something else. You know, Easy Love is littered with lots of good drum fills on that, and that was just because we didn't really think of the tape rolling. We were just recording it. just about to finish we had been writing this song and we just put a rough version down and so you know you don't really care because you think you're going to do it again anyway and then the next day we came in listened to it and liked it so we kept it but that's the way to do it don't tell a drummer you're going for a take otherwise you know you're going to get all this stuff thrown in the best way to catch people is when they're not expecting you gee G is for General Antonio Lopez de Santa Anna, who led the Mexican army at the Alamo. Time for a history lesson focusing on an era that fascinates Phil. Is it true you went through a clairvoyant who said that in a previous no, no, life no, you were no, there? No, 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 I didn't go to a clairvoyant. <laughs> there's, there's a guy that was kind of at the time um, at the sharp end of trying to get the Alamo re-envisaged, envisaged, um, <laughs> you know, kind of, trying to clean up the site, you know, f- from all the tourist attractions and make it a, a dignified place. I kind of got to know him a little. His wife was a clairvoyant. And we were at a party, that, an annual party, uh, when everybody that's in town for the anniversary of the battle, they go to this lady's house, you know, for a drink and a sing-song. I mean, it's, it's a lovely event in a lady's back garden. I mean, it's not a swish do. Um, and this guy's wife was serving behind a bar and I, and I got a margarita and she said, oh, oh by the way, I, I've been watching what you've been doing um, and reading about what your love of the Alamo and I got this for you. And so she, give, she gave me a, like a little brochure 
get she printed up of this guy, John W. Smith, who was one of the couriers in and out of the Alamo during the 13 days. He eventually was out when the Alamo fell and came back in time to see it all, you know, on fire. But um, he became the first mayor, first Anglo mayor of San Antonio. And uh, I've always been fascinated. The first thing I bought was actually a receipt for his saddle. And I couldn't believe that this, you know, the amount of miles this saddle had done for Texas and for the Alamo. So I was always fascinated by the guy, and he, you know, even though he was the first mayor, he, there's no, there's no image of him. She said that I was him in an earlier life, you know, and I kind, you know, I kind of remembered it. I didn't say, oh, of course, you know. I just said, okay, interesting. <laughs> Took the brochure away, still got it, and. Um, I mentioned it in a couple of interviews, you know, and, and of course then people started writing in thinking I was loopy. <laughs> Not fair, really. Um, the whole thing has taken on this kind of mysterious <laughs> kind of vibe to it. I mean, I collected the stuff because I was genuinely fascinated by this event. So I collected it and I've donated it to the Alamo now. They're going to put a museum together. But... You know, I, I never believed. I mean, my kids used to say to me, my older kids, you know, you must have been there because you're fascinated by it. So that with the lady, the clairvoyant lady saying that, you know, I, can't, I, just, I just remember it. Um, I'm not a particular believer in, in all of that. So, you know, I'm innocent. I'm innocent, Gov. <coughs> You're listening to the A to Z of Phil Collins with me, Phil Collins. Before we get to H, there's one more G. Let's do a short G. If, if I mean, if we say the word gorilla, your reaction would be? The gorilla, I was very flattered by that. They, they wrote, you know, I guess to get permission. But Cadbury's, or the advertising company, wrote to me and the manager to say we had this idea. And I said, well, if you, if you can make that work, great, go ahead, you know. Um, and they did, you know, they made it work and, and it was, I thought it was very good commercial. And, uh, what really impressed me was that on the Rugby World Cup day, I think it was, that they did a special England version with England, you know, come on England, come on the boys on the bass drum. I thought that was pretty hip, you know, to get a special version. But yeah, I thought it was a nice idea, fun. Is that what, like, I guess if you're, you know, if you're a celebrity, people are going to call things out of the street to you and they'll shout, like, if you're an actor, it'll be a famous name or a film. Do people shout out a drum fill at you when they spot you? Is that, is it your, is that what taxi drivers? <laughs> Oi, Phil! <laughs> da -dum, da -dum. <laughs> Does that happen? No, no, I don't get that. <laughs> don't get that? I don't get that, which is <laughs> kind of... If I, you know, if I lived in here and lived in London, then maybe I'd get a bit of it, but... People don't do that in America, you know. H. So catch me if you can, cause I'm going back. H could be two things. It could be Hanworth Road or it could be Hounslow, the address of where Phil was born. Yeah, Hanworth Road, yeah. Yeah. When, do, when did you last go back? How did it feel going back? I love it. Um... I mean, uh, when did I last go back? Well, I mean, you know, I used to drive past it quite frequently. Um, airport runs, you know, going this place or that place, drive up Hamworth Road. I've often wondered about knocking on the door of 453 and saying, can I go up to the attic? Because I, I'm sure my drum kit's up there. You know, I, I had a drum kit that fitted in a case, you know, and um, I didn't throw it away. And, you know, I moved out, but I kind of didn't think of going to the attic. So it's quite possible that 
my drum kit is there in the case, and I love to have it, you know, just for old time's sake. What's the name of the cartoonist? Gary... Larson. Yes. Big fan of Gary Larson. But there's a great cartoon of his with all these old toys up in the attic. And uh, there's the sort of the rocking horse, you know, with one eye and uh, three legs. And he's talking to the teddy bear and he says, you wait till he comes in to reminisce, then we'll get him. <laughs> I think it's a great, great idea. But that's what I think my drum kit is waiting for me. <laughs> H is for hang in long enough. That was episode two of the A to Z of Phil Collins, and that song was Hang In Long Enough from the But Seriously album. So we're about a third of the way through the alphabet, so there's still a way to go. In the next episode, expect some drumming heroes, thoughts on the nature of fame, and some more very decent music. So hit subscribe to make sure you get the next episode. Thank you for listening. Adieu, farewell, bon voyage. I've been Matt Everett. This has been a Cup and Nuzzle production. (laughs) 